Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, Breaking Through Strength Plateaus, video number nine, optimizing your training frequency. Training frequency could be the thing that is plateauing your strength. So let's take a look at the benefits first of higher training frequencies. There are quite a few. First of all, higher frequencies like, you know, training three times per week instead of two times per week for like the same for let's say bench or pressing or something, gives you more training sessions, which means more opportunities to stimulate uh, progress, which includes probably more muscle growth, all things being equal. And an interesting thing is if you do more weekly sessions and you split up the volume, make it a little smaller, your total volume per week can actually be uh, sustainably a little bit higher than if you try, you know, fewer frequencies. So at some point you can actually just do more weekly volume by splitting it up into more frequencies. It's kind of uh, actually a perfect analogy, uh, almost a homology here is you have, you know, people ask, you know, strong men and stuff, why do you eat five or six times a day? Uh, you could say, oh, metabolic rate, blah, blah, we all know that's bullshit. But the real reason is, motherfucker, if you have to eat 10,000 calories a day, you fucking can't do it in one meal, not reliably. After 5,000, you get so full, you don't want to eat for hours and hours and hours, and then you go to sleep and you're like, fuck, I only had X, Y, Z number of calories. You really want to smash the cows. you got to get your ass on a schedule and eat like, you know, like three or four times a day at least, probably more, just so every time you get a little less full, you smash it in again. Same idea kind of with training or similar, like if you're going to do like a ton of work for your legs to get your legs really strong, training legs once a week is kind of like, could you have done twice? Like, yeah, I could have. Like, was, why didn't you, right? And, and a sort of a similar thing there. Um, another ad advantage is by doing more frequency, even if you keep the overall weekly volume the same, you end up doing fewer sets per session. Right, so if you do 15 total sets for for squatting per week over two days, like one is eight and one is seven sets, okay. But if you split it up into three workouts, each workout has only five sets in it. What that allows you to do is because it's fewer sessions per set, each set is a higher quality. Because remember, set quality, both in how much weight you can lift for how many reps, the mind muscle connection, technique, everything, tends to deteriorate like you know, kind of curvilinearly after the first few sets. It all fucking goes to hell. So if you're doing seven sets, some of those maybe last three, two sets are like, meh, not that high quality. If you do five sets, they're kind of all really high quality and the drop off only occurs after. And that is for both technique and force output and everything. So if you can split up your session to the smaller ones, maybe you can do a better job in each session and just never get that tired. So that's definitely a consideration. Another thing is potentially much better technique development, especially if you're just learning the technique, but even for long-term lifters. The stimulus recovery adaptation curve, how long it takes for you to train something, get the, uh, so you have the sort of fatigue occurs, recovery occurs, adaptation occurs, and the curve completes itself. So when you can train again, essentially the, the window of training that you've bought yourself, those curves are different. And if you guys have seen the, the various books that we've written in RP, there's a whole lot of information on that. Those curves are different length for all kinds of different stuff and strength. So for example, if you really go all out and try as hard as you can, your sort of maximum central nervous system ability to do the best job you can, geez, those curves might take like a week after a really, really hard session to come back to your best. Technique's not the same. Technique usually has a very short SRA curves, which means you can stack a whole bunch of them into a week and improve your technique that much faster, right? Um, as a perfect example here, how fucking conceited am I on the perfect example? A fine example is if you have a very technique heavy sport, it's almost never practiced very little. If you want to get good at tennis, do you practice tennis once a week? What the fuck? Nobody does that. You practice it, gee whiz, you know, at least three or four times a week, maybe more like five or six or even nine or 10, you do two a days because there's a lot of opportunities to improve your technique and your body recovers from technical work really fast. And there's another opportunity to improve your technique. Whereas, you know, a lot of people squat heavy once a week and it's kind of like, okay, your heavy squat technique is this thing you practice once a week. How much better are you getting at it? You could be argued like not nearly as fast as you could be if you just did more sessions split throughout the week. And of course, there's a direct literature from actual studies. A lot of these are done on sort of weak undergraduates that don't lift, but some of them are done on pretty strong people. And most of the studies show that at least for some time, if you can recover from it, higher frequencies improve strength faster and more than lower frequencies on average, right? So there's something to be said, higher frequencies, definitely consideration that could make you better. Now, on the other hand, there are costs of higher frequencies and thus benefits to lower frequencies. First is joint and connective tissue irritation. 
It's a fucking thing. You can say, I'm going to squat four days a week. And then two weeks in on day number seven or some shit, you're like, my hips hurt. And they just never stop hurting. And then you stop lifting three weeks later. It's like, I can't fucking do this anymore. It's especially a problem in powerlifting for squats and deadlifts, both really seriously stress the connective tissues in your lower body and the musculature in your lower body. And thus, if you're doing a crap load of squat and deadlift sessions, it's fucking every time joint connective tissues are getting pounded. Remember, if you're having a higher frequency, that means actually your performance per session is higher than normal. So now it's more volume, more load, more everything, and all the fucking time, no breaks, that can really start to add up. And one of the number one reasons why a lot of the really biggest and strongest lifters don't do ultra high frequencies is because they can't survive it. So you have to be really, really careful with this one. Something that I sort of alluded to just now, you can do more volume and more load if you have higher frequencies you can generate an unbelievable amount of systemic fatigue just doing that. Like if you squat twice a week, you just at some point during those workouts, even if they're crazy, you get tired and you go home. So you can only impose a certain amount of systemic fatigue for the week with twice a week squatting. With four times a week squatting, even if each squat workout is, you know, 70% as fatiguing as the other ones, if you do the math, that's more systemic fatigue. Nothing in this fucking world will crush your ass like high frequency, high intensity strength training because you're like, oh my God, I'm doing so much volume. And then three weeks later, like, oh my God, I'm doing so much volume. I would have never been able to do this if I was training, you know, twice a week for the same muscle group or, or movement pattern. But now that I'm training three or four times, I'm like gasping for air. I can't fucking survive this kind of shit. Lastly, and this is very related to point number two, is you can get excessive psychological fatigue just from the frequency and the combined intensity. Just remember, if you have a higher frequency plan, you get to get go in more often and you're fresh more often, so you get to try really fucking hard. The amount of trying hard all the fucking time can catch up to you. Like you may have currently in your program, if you're a low frequency person, one really heavy squat day per week, one really heavy deadlift day per week, and two heavy bench days. So like, you know, you, there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of time to fucking go super hard. And there's a lot of time to be like, ah, I'm good. I have at least, the, you know, the rest of today and tomorrow to take it easy. And then I got to start psyching up, you know, drive to the gym, get scared. Am I really going to survive this workout? If you do a high frequency plan, oh my fucking God. Every day is fucking war and you're like, Jesus Christ, just get me out of here. I have to get up for this all the fucking time. It's scary, especially in the same lift over and over. Now, you don't just have to go heavy squats once a week. You got to do that shit three times a week now. Monday, heavy squats. You stare that fucking bar down. Wednesday, stare that bar down. Friday, the bar stares you down instead. You're like, get me out of here. So a lot of times it's not just physical fatigue that's imposed, but psychological as well. High frequency programming is like this incredible, you know, bowl of soup that we can chirp, sort of get our spoon into and, and get stronger. But that soup can be fucking hot as hell and it can be too much. And you're like, fuck, 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 it's the worst thing algae I've ever made. But in any case, it's this thing that has great power, but I guess, uh, you know, it's like some kind of like antimatter super fusion reactor. Like, yeah, it puts out a shitload of power, but you fuck something up. It's a lot going on there that can really fuck you up. Now, the good thing with high frequency training, it doesn't just surprise and blow up in your face. But after a few weeks of doing it, you could have sort of uh, poured a bit too much in the glass than, than, than the size of the glass. And you sort of only realize that like, holy shit, I can't survive this. So it could be a bad thing. And in fact, if you're currently doing a program that's ultra high frequency and you're hitting a plateau, it might be precisely that you're doing too much frequency. That is the very problem. Now, when we say higher frequencies, lower frequencies, what are the kind of the average frequencies even recommended or practiced by strength trainees? Where are we starting out from? This is what sort of called normative frequencies. Generally, two to four overloading sessions, hard sessions per movement type, you know, press or pull or squat per week are the norm. So for example, you might do three pressing sessions that are overloading, difficult, not just technique only, four squatting sessions, some some of the natty USAPL folks do this kind of thing, and then two pulling sessions, one of them is really overloading, one's maybe a little bit lighter, but still challenging, right? So if you're training a lift one or two times per week in an overloading way, maybe you're on the lower end of what you might be able to do frequency-wise. And if you're training a lift like you're benching four or five times a week pretty hard, then you're probably in the higher end of what you might be able to do. Now, lastly, and here's where the plateau busting comes along. If you are on the higher end of this frequency range, you're training three, four, five times a week for the same kind of lift and movement pattern, and you think you might be overdoing it, what is your best course of action, right? 
your best course of action, in my view, is to take one of those overloading sessions, let's say your Friday session, okay, you're still training hard Monday and Wednesday in the bench, Friday you used to bench really heavy, you turn it into a technique only session, which if you remember from a couple lectures before, it's just sets of uh, three to six reps at like a three to six RPE. So it's just technique work. It's barely heavy, just uh, you know a few sets to get your technique right and really, really practice lift well, but without really overloading your tissues or your psychology much at all. What this does, is it eases up the burden and still allows you to maximize technical development. Because if you just removed that altogether, maybe it would have been a good idea, but then you know there's less technical work and maybe that would have counterbalanced it, so you're still plateaued, but for another reason. So the technical session replacement of an overloading session is, is not a terrible idea because it still allows you to get that technique work in, but without adding to a fatigue burden and maybe even reducing it somewhat. So. Uh, I just gave that, I was going to read the example off the slide, but I just gave that example as good enough, right? Now, if that's still too much, if that third bench session is still too much, even though it's technique only, you can just do just one less frequency. So forget that session, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for bench. The Friday you tried to do technique only, that didn't really seem to help. It still seems like too much pressing. You take Friday out, you go Monday, Thursday, hard benching, and then Friday, nothing happens. You rest instead. And all of a sudden, Maybe you'll get some better results. And see how that goes and reevaluate down the road. If it's still too much, pull another session out and replace it with a technique session and so on and so forth to see where you get your best results. The opposite thing occurs if you're on the lower end and you think you're underdoing it. Let's say, you know, oh, what's the example here? You're squatting hard two times per week, but you think, oh man, you know, I, I think I could benefit from a higher frequency. Um, what you do is you add a technique only session first, just a technique only session. And you see how that goes because a lot of the benefits of higher frequency is the technique improvement, which you can actually within just a few weeks should make you better at the lift. So what you do is let's say you're currently squatting Monday, Thursday, relatively hard. You go to squatting hard Monday and Wednesday, and then Friday, you used to not squat at all, you throw in a technique only squatting session, right? Sets of three to six reps with a three to six RP, super easy, super good technique stuff. And then just boost your technical development without adding much, if any, fatigue, because light exercise has actually shown to reduce fatigue, but this is sort of not that light, probably adds no fatigue at all on average, maybe just a little bit. And if that goes well and you improve, that's awesome. But if you're improving and you're also like, man, honestly, I'm recovering super well. I think I can do three hard sessions. Go ahead and try that. But I would always try adding the technique only sessions first, because I'll tell you this, if you're feeling really challenged and you added the technique session and, and you're still not gaining any sort of ability, I don't think the answer is to take that technique session and make it a super hard one because you're already feeling challenged. So the only way you do this, try that technique session. If it boosts your ability is great. I would just keep it in for a while and change nothing. And then if you hit another plateau, you have to ask yourself, do I feel sufficiently challenged? Can I do more frequency? Uh, will my joints handle it? So on and so forth. You probably have a good inkling of an idea of whether or not that's the case. If you think, yeah, yeah, I'll try more frequency. Great. Do it up. Take that session and turn it from a technique session into an overloading session. But if you think, man, fuck, uh, there's no way I can do more. Don't do anything stupid like squatting three or four times a week and getting yourself killed or at the very least weaker which is to say the same thing metaphorically. Folks, I think we have one more video left in the series. I'm going to sign myself out and go do nothing. I'll be staring at a wall for the next uh, whole week until I come back to you in a week to do this next video. See you then.